welcome back to the channel and today I'm gonna to attempt to replicate this strange radial piston kind of mechanism that I found on the art of rendering YouTube channel this suggestion was actually brought to my attention in my discord in the creation suggestions channel so let's take a look at it over on the art of rendering all right so this is the mechanism right here as you can see this is gonna be very there's gonna be a lot of bearings it's a very high stack of a lot of rotating parts together that results in these two uh two beams or two sets of pistons that are essentially going back and forth. Well, I guess there's four piston heads, but there's technically only two beams that are being moved in order to move the four pistons. But as you can see, everything spins in the middle and it creates this kind of radial piston effect as each uh, subsequent piston gets pushed out. Now, this is really interesting. Let's hop back over and scrap mechanic. This is very interesting because it actually reminds me of something I've already built a while ago, way back in the beginning of this kind of recreating real life mechanism series. Uh, and that is the Trammel of Archimedes. Functionally, it appears appears to do almost the exact same thing, but the shape and the way that it is the source of the uh, power is completely different. So this is called the Trammel of Archimedes. You may or may not be familiar with it, but if you look at how it actually functions, it's essentially doing the, ex the same exact thing. There is uh, essentially a piston action going in four at four different points. We got one there, one there, and then out here. And then out here, and then down here, so it has this radial piston effect. But, um, that's, it's weird that I never really thought of it as a radial piston effect until I now saw it in the context of this new video. But, as you can see, there's one rotation point right here, which moves with the actual slider, as opposed to, uh, this new mechanism, which, uh, has a central rotation point that does not move, and then it has a bunch of other rotation points that kind of do move, but... It's going to be interesting. I'll actually keep this in the world so we can compare the movement of this to whatever I end up building to try to replicate this new one. And as usual, I will leave a link to my reference video down in the description. You can also check out other stuff on the channel and find some crazy other mechanisms that would just be impossible to build in uh, Scrap Mechanic or pretty much any other game that I play. But let me figure out what I'm actually doing to build this thing. So all of the source of rotation, I'm going to say, comes from that top rotating part in this uh, in this animation here. Actually, looking at it, I'm not going to do the top. I'm going to do the bottom. It's going to be easy to build from the bottom up. And there's an identical rotation point on the top and the bottom of this one. The middle of this base is going to be our first rotation point. We're already making great progress. I actually don't know. I feel like if I build this the way that it is, and I only have a single powered bearing right here, and then if every other stacked bearing is a loose bearing, I don't think these pistons are going to stay in line. There is nothing keeping these in line as sliders. They would just flop all over the place, wouldn't they? There's nothing preventing them from spinning around. You know what? That's going to be the fun of it. I'm going to build it as is right there, and then I'm going to try to solve the issues that are inherent with how this design is going to work in Scrap Mechanic, because I'm predicting this is going to cause some issues. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to color code this thing so I, you can follow what part I'm building when. So this is going to be the starting little peg at the bottom, and then this actually kind of goes out in a bit of an L shape. I'm going to do three blocks, and then we're going to put another bearing right there. And then this one kind of goes back with another bearing on top of it, and and this is going to be that first, like, pinkish, purpley, which one is it? Like that? Yeah, like that color right there. All right, and then on top of this is where we have our first piston beam, piston rod. All right, I will just have this extend out like that, color the ends. I know it's not the roundest looking pistons right now, but that's... I don't think the shape of the pistons is the main focus of this build. Okay, so then we have another bearing on top of this. So this is why I think this is going to be a problem. Because these, this is just going to rotate freely in between. And it's going to create some chaos. So we need to find a way to stabilize that. But now this one actually extends out longer. This is kind of weird to me, actually. Should I have it go five or four? It almost looks like it's just one, kind of one unit longer. I'm just gonna go one unit longer and hope that that's gonna be okay. I hope this isn't too sensitive on the uh, dimensions like some of the other ones that I built have been. All right, and then this goes back. Oh, I think this actually is twice as long, unless this is shorter. Oh, these, these, these measurements are different. Because then this has to come back three blocks, which then overlaps with this one, which returns back to the center to be in line with the bottom there. So this is essentially another attachment point uh, to the top section. Wait a minute. I completely forgot one of the pistons. 
<laughs> There's supposed to be a piston right there, I think. All right, now that we got the piston installed in the right uh, area, now we can do this overlap here, which the three, the three, and then this. This is going to attach to the ceiling to keep everything in line. All right, does that make sense what I'm building here? This looks really nonsensical compared to the, the animation, but maybe once it starts moving, it'll make even less sense. I need to attach this back in a way that it's not going to interfere with the, uh, the pistons themselves. So I guess I could attach it at an angle over to the corner. All right, how does this thing look if I hit it with a hammer? Yeah, see, this is not stable. This is not stable at all. There's nothing keeping. This is just a whole bunch of bearings. Nothing, no, nothing isolates these bearings to stay in any particular like rotational location. Like this and this. Oh boy, why is it wobbling? Why is it wobbling so much? But the top and the bottom ones are the only stable points, and it, there's nothing making everything else fall in line on this animation here. Well, let's power it up, though, and see what it looks like under power. All right, here it goes. Turn it up a little bit. And this is what is happening right now. This is not good. How many bearings are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I could... One of the things I could do potentially is like use a controller or I could try to stabilize them. Hold on. So this goes, there's no way. This doesn't work unless I extend these out a lot. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see what I can do here. Actually, I'm going to use these low friction blocks to create guide rails. So in order for this stuff not to collide, these blocks have to be one, two, three, four, five, six blocks away. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means that this has to extend out this much farther to stay in the groove. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that works. So then this has to go an extra five. One, two, three, four, five. Everything has to go an extra five. Five, five. All right, so now that I have these guide rails, let's see how it feels. Oh, well that just, obviously, that's a problem. Like this is just a free bear. Maybe, no, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe that shouldn't be a free bearing, but no, it has to rotate. This thing has to rotate about that thing. This doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. Whoa, 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 okay. It started working kind of. Well, this is it. When I power to the top one, they both need to be powered. What if I, what happens if I have them go the same direction? Okay, now it's still working. Oh, the guide rails work. Wait a minute. So if I don't have the guide rails, it's still going to be a mess, right? Let's see what happens here. Take that guide rail out. Take that guide rail out. Uh, take this guide rail out. Take this guide rail out. Now we have no more guide rails. And yeah, now... Whoa! Oh, this is actually kind of cool. Huh. Oh, 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 I just ruined it completely. Yeah, the guide rails are definitely completely necessary, but having both the top and the bottom powered at the same time, spinning in the same direction like this is necessary. I can't have one powered and not the other. So there has to be two sources of power for this. All right, let me add the guide rails back and I'll put the piston ends on the uh, rods. All right, you know what's even better than pistons? Pizza. You thought we were building a radial piston engine? Nah, this is a radial pizza engine. All right, so now when we activate it, look at that motion. That is looking pretty good. This is actually moving faster than the animation. I wonder if I can get it to go the same speed as the animation. Oh no, now this is going slower than the animation, isn't it? It's either faster or slower, I think. Well, let's see how fast we can push it up before this thing breaks. I feel like it's gonna break at some point. Yeah, this is definitely faster now, though. All right, how fast can we go? All right, next speed. Oh, you know what? I need to weld this thing to the ground. Hold on. There we go. We don't want it sliding around. Turn it up a little. One more notch. Each notch goes twice as fast, pretty much. Okay, now I'm starting to see the instability now. We're definitely having some issues, but it's staying on track. Hasn't glitched through yet. Oh, it's going to glitch through. Oh, it got stuck. Did something... Did something actually glitch? No? Okay, well, let's keep uh, ramping it up. All right, I don't think anything's gonna change at this point. Oh. Out there we go. That's what I was waiting for right there. It glitching through the tracks. All right, well, let's turn that back down to a stable state. All right, and we will put it next to the trammel of Archimedes. 
Oh no, I just remembered I can't move the Trammel of Archimedes because this is a separate piece. Actually, I guess that is one distinct difference between these two objects is everything in here is connected by something. Whereas on the Trammel of Archimedes, um, this part, the, all of those moving parts are actually not technically attached to the base. I'm actually just noticing these are not rotating the same way. In the animation, all of the purple segments are actually staying in line with each other. Here, however, for some reason, they are all complete. They are rotating in opposite directions. Yeah, this one is rotating counterclockwise. This one's rotating clockwise. This one is rotating counterclockwise. In the animation, they're all rotating clockwise. How does that work? This should be rotating counterclockwise if I'm going by the animation, and this one from the top-down perspective should also be rotating counterclockwise. All right. And then now, that's so weird. These ones still do not, they do not line up with each other. I think that's just like a chance thing. Like, I think it's possible for them to all go in the same direction at the same time. The other ones don't actually start rotating until this one gets 180 degrees offset, see? Right there, then everything starts rotating. That is so weird. I wonder if I can force it somehow. If I put that there. Oh, there we go. Oh, I did it. Now this, now, now if I unhook that, now it is in a stable rotation with everything going clockwise. All the purple segments are now going clockwise. This is technically the same animation now. That's so weird that it needs help in order to rotate like this and that it's just as stable rotating in a completely different way. See, look at that. I just changed it. <laughs> and it still works though. It still works. I just realized this actually changes the piston rotation because if you look at which piston is extending when, this is technically the pistons are going in a clockwise rotation because we have bottom left, top right bottom, left, top, right. So that's going clockwise. However, if I force this thing back into the uh, identical rotation again, now you can see it's bottom, right, top, left, bottom, right, top, left. So what these purple ones do will actually change the rotation of the pistons from clockwise to counterclockwise. That is so interesting. I was not expecting this kind of like interesting results from this. I thought it was just, hey, it works or it doesn't work. Nope, there's two different ways for this one to work. Oh, and as I look at these two things next to each other, there is another very glaring functional difference between these two. The, the way that this is, because each of these, if I just call these the pistons, each of these pistons are actually on the same plane as each other. That means that they cannot be longer than uh, pretty much this, because otherwise they will collide with each other. Whereas these ones, you just saw I extended these a lot, and because they're on separate planes, they do not collide with each other. So that is uh, also a distinct functional difference from these two things. Interesting to see how similar these two mechanisms are, and yet how very different they are, despite doing almost, almost the same functional thing. So if you guys have any other cool mechanism that you'd like to see me try to build, let me know down in the comments below, or uh, submit it into the creation suggestions on my Discord. There's a link to join the Discord down in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.